it's in, it's gone. And today we'll be looking at my pick for the most average player in the MLB. Recently, I saw a Trees video in which he finds the most average NBA player. So if you enjoy this video and you also enjoy watching basketball, you should go check that one out. The formatting and scoring system will be somewhat similar to the scoring system in this video as well. While being average is not the mantle that any player should be shooting for, it's still great knowing that you're st statistically better than about half of your counterparts in the best league in the world. Furthermore, baseball is a very random league, so a player who might be league average may become an all-star the very next season. Also, with the average MLB contract being around 4.17 million, you can expect to make that much just by being average, which is not too shabby by any standards. Comment down below if you would like me to do the most average pitcher or the most average player at every position. And before we get on to the video, could you guys please hit the subscribe button? Currently only 3% of people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if y'all do, not only would it help me grow my channel, but I would very much appreciate it. This video is definitely one of my most researched videos, so any feedback would be greatly appreciated. And without further ado, let's get on to the video. First, we need to set some bounds for what kind of players should qualify for the most average player award. I want players who've contributed a fair amount to their MLB team, but at the same time, they really don't have to be starters. I do want to include players who mainly pinch hit or get a spot start here and there, and I would also like to include catchers who may not have the most at bats compared to their infielder and outfielder counterparts. So we're going to be generous here and give a minimum of 100 total at bats for the entire MLB this season. Although this might seem fairly generous, I think that there is a fair amount of players who may not have had the most at bats they might have gotten injured and should still qualify anyways there are 404 players who qualify for that and that number will shrink drastically after we put some limitations on that 404 players the first limitations that we're going to put is batting average and now i know that it's not the best stat in telling a player's worth but i believe that's a good starting point to make off of and it definitely widows out the best and worst players to start in 2021 the average only batting average was 244 so in order to find players around that, we are going to put players within five points of 244 and any player that is below 238 or above 250 is no longer going to be in the running for the most average player. To show that batting average is not the best stat to use and would not should not be the only stat used, there are still some amazing players left on this list, such as Anthony Rendon, Jazz Chisholm, and Max Muncy, but it is a good starting point. After the first round of cuts, we're down to 59 players out of the original 404 players, but we need to shrink that number down even more before we get down to our scoring system. The next category that we're going to be using is slugging percentage, and in 2021, the average slugging percentage for an MLB player who had at least 100 at-bats was 407. Because slugging percentage has a wider range, we're going to be using 10 digits within the average. So any player with a slugging percentage below 396 or above 408 are now out. Individually, we have 50 players who qualify for this stat, but now including the previous restrictions of batting average, we are down to already eight players who qualify for both batting average and slugging percentage. Those eight players are Freddie Galvis, Jonathan VR, Robbie Grossman, Rowdy Telez, Trent Grisham, Luis Garcia, Carson Kelly, and Chad Pinder. And now I'm willing to personally take off two of these players on the list in Carson Kelly and Trent Grisham, who would have not qualified for the most average player award anyways, based on the metrics that we're going to be using next, but I'm just gonna take them off now for convenience. Trent Grisham is a great fielding center fielder whose worth is not reflected by mere batting average and slugging percentage. Carson Kelly is a catcher whose numbers may be average for the average MLB player, but for the average catcher, it's well above average in terms of hitting stats. So while Carson Kelly might be an average MLB player, he's actually really above average for a catcher. So that's why I'm going to take them off. That still leads us with six players to judge in Freddie Galvis, Jonathan VR, Robbie Grossman, Rowdy Telez, Luis Garcia, and Chad Pinder. And the first metric that we're gonna be measuring off of is their position. Currently, most players play an outfield position, followed by a middle infielder, then corner infielder, and at last catcher. So players who play an outfield position now get zero points, followed by middle infielder, which gets negative one points, and then corner infielder, which gets negative two. Catcher would get negative five, but there are no catchers left on this list. Also, I would like to mention that the highest score would indicate the most average player. So currently, Chad Pinder is in the lead for the most average player in the MLB. Next, we're going to be using OPS Plus, and because 100 is already league average, we're going to be taking their player's OPS Plus and subtract it by 100, then divide it by 2, and the negative absolute value of that is going to be the player's score. 
Freddie Galvis is now at negative 5.5. Jonathan VR is out now at negative two. Robbie Grossman with his OPS plus of 116 falls down to negative eight, followed by Rowdy Telez, negative 4.5. Luis Garcia is negative eight. And Chad Pinder is still in the league with negative one. Up until now, all the stats that we've been doing are hitting stats. So we now move on to a good fielding stat in total zone fielding above average, which provides a good quantitative source on how good one's fielding is. We're going to be doing the same here, but zero is league average. So we're just going to be doing the negative absolute value of that divided by two. And now Jonathan VR takes the lead with negative 3.5 points, followed by Chad Pinder and Freddie Galvis. And it is at this point where we can basically eliminate two more players in Robbie Grossman and Luis Garcia, and that they are both really far back from the others, mainly due to their OPS range from 100. Now that we're down to only four players, let's look at some off the field metrics and the average salaries of the players. As stated before, the MLB average salary is $4.17 million, and Jonathan VR is the closest to that at $3.55 million made in 2021, followed by Chad Pinder, then Freddie Galvis, and lastly, Rowdy Telez. It is at this point where we're going to stop using the point system, but it, these stats definitely hold some weight in choosing the most average player. Next, we're going to be looking at the MLB average height and weight, which is 6'2", 207 pounds. Jonathan VR and Chad Pinder are the only two who really fit the mold of the most average player. So we're going to eliminate two more players in Freddie Galvis and Rowdy Telez. So now we're down to only two players. The last stat that we're going to be using is speed. According to Baseball Savant, the average MLB speed is 27 feet per second. And Jonathan VR is closest at only 0.3 feet per second off at 27.3. But Chad Pinder is really close at 0.4 feet per second at 26.6. But because Jonathan VR is closest, he's going to be my winner for the most average player in the MLB. Now it's time to go into some limitations about this. So obviously, the biggest one is that we've only used metrics from 2021. And while past production is not a good indicator of future production, I think that this study provided some good metrics and a ballpark estimate of the most average player. Another limitation is also the lack of implementing stolen bases here. For example, my pick for the most average player in Jonathan VR stole 20 bases in 2021, while Chad Pinder, the runner-up, stole only one base. But the reason why I decided to leave stolen bases off this list is because the range between stolen bases is so different that the average would be far off from the majority of players and either that they steal well above the average stolen bases or roughly zero because coaches decide that they don't want to have their slow players steal bases as it's a bigger risk because they will most likely get out. The last limitation here is the DH position. Total zone fielding does not count if one plays a DH position, and even though one might be a poor fielder, they could play DH most of their games, and total zone fielding would reflect them as average. Otherwise, those are the only limitations that I could think of, but if you have another one, please leave it down in the comments below along with your pick for the most average player. But otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.